Tommy. Thank you very much. So let's give a big hand since the last time we saw her, new city controller of Los Angeles. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Uh, Mr. Bond, if you're okay, we're going to uh, approve item number one on consent. Great. I do not have any cards on item number one, as well as we're going to continue item number four, I believe, for two weeks. Is that correct? Um, yes. Okay. So the first one would be item number two. Item number two is the DOT report relative to the submittal of grant applications for the state safe routes uh, to school program. I, I, uh, Mike Wano, Department of Transportation. Shh. I distributed a new list. Looks like this. Okay. Uh, there are two minor changes to this. Um, two projects have been removed because they will be submitted in the city's uh, package of economic stimulus projects. There were two uh, traffic signal projects that um, were among our highest ranking projects. There were uh, there are safety issues, I guess, and so we're going to submit them in the economic stimulus package, and those are guaranteed to be funded at this point. So you said they're guaranteed to be funded because I I mean yes. it's, okay they're they're in our they're in our tier one list of projects I think so uh, those are the, that's that's using the city's allocation okay um, so. Uh, it was uh, the projects were Angeles Mesa Elementary in CD8 and 52nd Street in CD9. And you swapped out other projects for them. Is that correct? Uh, no. We just no. We removed those from the list. From the tier, they were in tier yeah. two. Yeah. Or they, they were in this. No, no. They were they were gonna they were in the top tier here. They were and in the so, top tier. Okay. And. Um, Clearly, uh, as I read, um, these there's 25 projects, and you've met with each of the council offices, correct? Yes. Okay. And so they are in uh, agreement there. So you took out one from eight that's being funded. That's right, one from eight? Yes. And one, what was the other one? From nine. From nine. Because I see two that she had, that nine had, in the form you gave us before, and I still see two, the same two um, in the document you've handed to me as well. That's correct. Um, the 52nd Street Elementary School should be omitted from that. The 52nd, okay. And Mr. Hernandez, I know you're here on, with dual hats on. You're okay with that from the Ms. Perry's perspective? Okay. Okay, so that would amend that current report, take out the 52nd. Okay. I'm sorry. And, and there's no, I know that the uh, initial goal was to get two from each district. Yes. I see District 3 doesn't have any. Yes. Uh, what was the, they didn't submit, no. there wasn't any yes. particular that fit. Yes. Okay. But I'll go back to you. You've talked to every council office. Yes. They know what is the course. Okay. Um, and I know we're still kind of battling with um, Caltrans about their, you know, qualifications and all that. Any yes. update, or not qualifications, but their review process and acceptance. Anything? They, they did tell us that they will uh, have an open uh, forum where they discuss the way that they evaluated the projects, and they'll have everybody's score, and everybody can see everybody's score. So they've okay. agreed to do that. They've agreed to that. Okay. Yeah. You'll keep us on the loop on that. Yes. Okay. Mr. Bunch? I'm okay. okay. District engineers okay? And you, uh, this is on the school routes? Yes, they the district absolutely engineers are. Yes. And did you forward this to the school district and their department that handles uh, schools? We will. Well, will you? Thank you, Michael. Okay, good. Mr. I'm okay. Let me ask you again, why was Mesa moved in the 8th district? Um, it's in our package for funding under the economic stimulus. Okay. Now, on any of these fundings, they're not get, either one of them are guaranteed, right? The economic stimulus is more guaranteed because there is a certain um, allocation for the city of Los Angeles. And uh, uh, I think the traffic signal projects are within that allocation. Okay. 
Is, would there have been another <coughs> a third choice in the 8th District that would have moved up, or is there just a limited amount of money for this batch of projects? Um, well, there's always a limited amount of money. It, the, the, the money that's available this year will be $24 million statewide. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're 10% of the population, we're looking at about $2.5 million okay. at most. Okay. So there was nothing you reviewed as a replacement for Angeles Mason? No, we didn't find Find anything. I mean, this, it, this came at the last minute. I mean, this came after the list was finalized. Okay. And so, thank you. Okay. With with that, um, we will uh, adopt the department's report uh, with the change outlined earlier on that 52nd Street. Yes. And I would just like to ensure that on O'Shea, yes. that your your department is working closely with Expo Line because they have put together a safety package. That is going to the PUC, I believe, Thanks. by either April or May 20th, and that we need to make sure that all those pieces are in, in place because PUC approved that crossing only with the expectation of a safety plan being submitted before the train will be allowed to go okay. forward. So we need to make sure that what you're doing, and I think we have another one later in, on one of the items. The uh, street widening on, on Western Avenue, all those things have to fit as a piece of a puzzle to ensure for the PUC to continue their support. Okay. Yes. So that being said, um, we will uh, adopt that um, recommendation. And, uh, Madam City Clerk, we also have um, Mr. Parks here now, so he is voting on number one with us as well. So the committee is adopting the revised list as amended. Yes. Next item. Item number three is the DOT report relative to the submittal of the project application for the 2009 Transportation Improvement Program call for projects. Uh, what I have here, again, is another um, modified list to the reports that we've at, uh, we've submitted. There are um, about five changes that we've made to this list. The first change is, is um, that we've added three projects in signal synchronization and bus speed improvement. That's on page three. When we originally started the call, we were under the impression, I guess, that we were ineligible for the signal sync project as a result of our um, being awarded $150 million in the uh, state um, infrastructure bond. Uh, but when MTA went to the board with their report, they, they didn't recommend what they told us they were going to recommend, and the board then did not vote on what we were told. And so we were eligible for signal sync. And so we don't have any other ATSAC projects to add because those have all been funded with the state bond, but we do have some other projects that are eligible for this category that we are proposing to submit. They're transit priority system projects. It's where we're working with MTA to um, improve the travel time of buses in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, and then uh, the other project is a information integration uh, project where we're, we in the county and other members of the uh, intelligent transportation systems working group, I guess, share their traffic information with each other so that everybody knows what everybody's doing. Um, and so those are the three projects that we've added in that category. Um, the next change is the Port of L.A. dropped the um, RSTI project. It's, it's also on page three. We've moved it below the line at this point since they are um, not proposing to submit it at this time. It's SR 47 and Navy Way Interchange. Um, Um, could you go just very quickly about how this list was oh, put sorry. together? That's yes. okay. Just, um, I mean, I know in, in reading it that it was uh, many, some of these projects are ones that were previous. You started with the call for projects, yes. but just to show the, in yes. what's happened. We started in February meeting with the Interdepartmental Advisory Committee that consists of council offices and um, interested departments, Bureau of Street Services, Bureau of Engineering, your sanitation joined us this time, transportation, uh, rec and parks, EAD, CRA, um, 
And we, we started with the list of projects from last time that were unfunded and that were not submitted. And we went around to all the council offices and asked what their priorities were. We gave them the list to give them an idea of what was um, proposed last call and what they might start with this call. We solicited project nomination forms for all the projects that were to be included in this call. And uh, we uh, had them by category. We formed subcommittees for each mode that reviewed the projects based on MTA's criteria. They're kind of here in the middle of the page. And they scored each project uh, with respect to those criteria. And, and, and that led to the ranking here. We had trouble, you know, normally we set a limit to what we're going to submit so that we don't uh, spend too much time on too many projects because we usually have more projects than uh, Metro has money. But uh, this time was especially difficult because Metro doesn't have a limit as, as yet. Uh, they have announced that, they did announce earlier that there was only 132 million available for this call. And then when Measure R passed, um, they announced that additional funds would become available, but they didn't know how much. And so we're anticipating something between the 132 million that they announced before Measure R passed and the 450 million that was in the 2007 call. And the way that we limited the uh, categories this year was that we uh, limited the projects to the awards that MTA made in the 2007 call. That's the actual money that they gave out, with the exception of TDM, because that category last year was undersubscribed, and so we used their initial target for TDM projects. Mr. Parks, do you have some? Yeah. Let me just ask a couple of questions. Uh, one of the things, and on your uh, first document we approved on the state return, uh, Fauche is where we need it up at the top of our list. The thing that I was concerned about is that a couple of things. Number 16 we is a project that we basically sent through last year, and it didn't come up high enough for consideration, and that's the Expo Park uh, area, and it was somewhat of a joint effort between myself and CD9. And one of the concerns is that when this was submitted before, it was rated on dated information, and that they, uh, when they uh, did not take into consideration uh, the significant increase in traffic flow on King, which is viewed as an alternate route for the uh, Santa Monica Freeway, the number of activities that are in the park, and uh, a variety of things that uh, are, and also I think Vermont being the number one uh, corridor for public transportation. And so. Next to Wilshire, though. Well, nor let me say the north and south. All right, very good, very good, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> north and south, and poor people. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but let me just ask. We would assume if it was there last year and we did the new uh, analysis on workload and such that moved it up, that it would come out a little higher than 17th citywide, particularly since uh, of the significant activity in that area. The college is growing. The park is growing. Um, you're, you're looking at the uh, just a block off of the uh, freeway, uh, at least from Expo and King. And so it just befuddles me how this one would continues not to be in the appears to be in the, the top list citywide when we're when this park is becoming the magnet for so many things that are going on, including the expo line that is going to run just north of it. And so that's a concern as to how low that one is. But then the other concern I have is in the same listing, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Poche at, at uh, Western and Expo is a major concern, yet even the street widening on number 32 is below a project at Western and Florence that I don't believe has nearly the significance that we're trying to ensure that Poche is going to be a part of a larger safety plan. Street widening is absolutely essential because without the widening, we have two choices. We can 
take away the business parking, which makes businesses go away, or if we don't widen the street, we can't get the left turn signals in that make it safer for cars and the train. And so for that one to be at number 32 and below a, another project that's actually in the district at 28 doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So those are the things I'm concerned about because from my comments, you'll get a sense that Fauché right now is our number one project. And because of the approval, all of these things have to fit in because without a piece of it, and if we basically go to the PUC with a plan that is not viewed as the safety plan that they're looking for, we're Very all back, roll back into the dirt again on reevaluating that cross. Yep. And so that's why we plug those in and that street widening is essential for two sides. It can be a congestion issue uh, with the parking there going across, losing the left turn lanes. It's a safety issue. Uh, leaving, uh, expanding the street and leaving the parking saves the businesses and saves the left turn lanes. So for me to, to have that down at 32 and particularly in front of Florence, which is nice to have and we think it should be on the list, but it's, it's not nearly as critical to us as Fauché at Western and Expo. And, and then the one at Exposition Park, for this to be the second time we've gone in this round, particularly with all the new information that we gathered last time, it just would seem like it would have been a little higher than the 17 that was rated. That, one of the things I wanted to do, the, does the committee ever go to the actual community where these projects are to see what's going on, or are they just looking at paper? They're pretty much looking at paper. We um, So the grading is basically how well it's written and kind of, yes. Yeah. Because the thing is, I think if you go to some of these locations, you get a sense that we're talking about a train next to a school and a, and a very compressed street. Yeah. <laughs> the visual would be far greater than just reading the paper. And, and a wander through Exposition Park would give you a sense of just how busy the four corners right. of that park are and bordered on Figaro and Ver Vermont and King and Expo. Uh, if we can't justify curve cuts and, and right-hand turns, I don't know if we have any projects that would be able to meet any criteria. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I, can, I can invite the subcommittee chair up to explain how they, they arrived at their score. Uh, we, we don't, on, on, on a lot of projects, we don't have the opportunity to go out because we get so many of them and, and the committee's trying to evaluate all of them in a very compressed time frame. Um, I think what, we, what, we've, what we've asked um, council offices to do on projects that are very important to them is help us with the application. Yeah. We'll try and write the application as well as we know, but then if the council office can review and, you know, highlight and add those things that they're aware of that we may have missed, I think that will that will help the, the project enormously at MPA. Yeah. And, see, and the other thing, have we gotten to the pedestrian improvements yet? Okay. Now we have. Oh, no, I'm just going to ask, because for consistency, when you again look at Western and, and you have three consecutive projects on Western being viewed fairly high in the numbers, it would appear that there's some understanding of the issues around Fauché, but then we lose track of it when we go to the number of projects that we're currently reviewing. So if we can identify Western Avenue uh, and exposition as a critical issue in these pedestrian projects, but it seems to have fallen significantly on another issue, yet it's the same larger safety problem. So that's what I don't get a sense where you can look at it pedestrian-wise, the same three projects on Western seem to elevate in the top 12 or 15, but yeah. here's one that oh. we're saying, if you if you don't do the street widening, we can't do left turns, or we create congestion in the street, or we lose businesses, it's way down 32. Yeah. Off the top of my head, um, the the different categories are, are, are emphasizing different things. And I think maybe what happened with this particular example is that the congestion um, 
the the PI project, the pedestrian improvement projects, are are uh, I think the major focus at at Fauche. I mean, we're looking to try and protect the students that are going to and from Fauche, given that we're putting in this and I train. The, and the so, is, but when we turn around and we say we don't widen Western, defeats the purpose of a lot of these pedestrian safety issues. I understand, but what I'm trying to say is that in the RSTI category, they're more focused on um, uh, congestion, relief. congestion relief and things like that. And so the pedestrian issues have a lower a weight in, in that category. And so it, it, it kind of makes some sense to me that pedestrian issues at Fauché are the issue. And so the pedestrian projects at Fauché float to the top. and. Uh, because pedestrian issues are driving the RSTI project and pedestrian issues aren't uh, a priority there, it kind of floats to the bottom. So yeah. I can. But I think the issue is if you have several committees and they're not aware with what each is working on, to have one committee saying we understand the pedestrian issues around Fauché, yet another committee is saying we'll weight it down and it's not as significant but actually creates maybe additional pedestrian issues or nullifies what the other committee's doing appears to be counterproductive. Yeah, but we're, we're trying to work from the rules that MTA established. And so um, uh, sometimes those kinds of connections are lost when we're, we're trying to follow their rules specifically. But I would hope if there's city projects in the city of LA that somebody is looking at the larger picture and saying, at least one committee says all of these pedestrian issues that Fauché around the school are important. On another group, they looked at uh, Fauché uh, because of the train, that somebody would have looked and said, well, if we got all this Fauché stuff, why is the street widening down in 32? It might be counterproductive with what everyone else is producing. So, I, I mean, it just kind of makes it inconsistent, particularly when we know all the things we do around that school are going to be part of a safety plan that PUC is going to be ruling on. And I think everybody's aware of those circumstances. Councilmember, if I may address that specific project of Western and Expo, by the way, Ken Husting, LADOT, and co-chair for the RSTI subcommittee. When we did look at Western and Sunset, uh, we looked at it strictly from the criteria that MTA gives us. And unfortunately, MTA does not take into consideration the safety aspect. But at Western and Sunset, there's no northbound 101. I'm sorry, so I don't West, West, Western Expo. Okay. Yes. Western you Expo. said Western <laughs> and Sunset, so I got you up there. There's another project. No, sorry you're about gonna, that. You're going to hear from me. I, I was, was going to agree with you on that. <laughs> no. And they don't deserve any consideration. <laughs> now, I'm sorry. What, Expo and Western. Western and Expo. Specifically, the MTA criteria does not place a great deal or quite honestly, much significance on safety. It's really geared towards congestion relief. And when looking at that project, even though it is very, it is an important project, unfortunately, based on the criteria, the congestion relief, it's a left turn pocket. So when you have something like Western and Florence, where you're providing an additional lane, based on the calculations, the other projects show greater congestion relief as opposed to just a left turn pocket at that location, as crucial as it may be. And then also, when you take the delay calculations and you try to come up with the cost effectiveness, because the delay didn't show up to be that great and the project is a certain cost, then the cost effectiveness is lowered. But, but let me just remind you, the reason all that came about is because someone made a decision they were going to wipe out the parking on Western without any discussion or concern about the businesses that would have disappeared. So if you make a decision that it's no congestion, because we're not going to we're going to eliminate the parking and then six or eight businesses disappear and we come to you and say we're not going to let you make those businesses disappear we've now just created congestion that would have been in the calculation had we considered what removing the parking would have done and we don't disagree with you yeah. so the thing is we get you know on the one hand we're trying to save businesses we're trying to protect kids and we're trying to address all these issues at one time but when someone kind of cavalierly says, well, we don't need to widen the street because we'll just eliminate parking and not consider six or eight businesses disappearing, then we get penalized a couple of ways. We don't get high enough priority as it relates to the widening coming about. And if 
We don't widen the street. We can't get the left turn signals, which uh, the left turn loops, which are important to safety. If we make the businesses go away, then we have several people who are unemployed, so we keep a street at the same size. So yes. those criteria, whoever made those judgments, are the ones that put us in this bind because there's no way you can go to Western and Expo and say, don't, don't widen the street, make the businesses go away. Yeah. I mean, that's what is bizarre. I'm not going to disagree with you on those concerns. Unfortunately, you know, the RCS subcommittee just went by what MTA gave us. Yeah. But I'm and, and that really back, does limit us. If we go back and look at it and say, we're not going to eliminate the businesses and parking is going to stay there, then we have to go back and consider what is the congestion we just created because the parking is going to be there. So if we have that have congestion, now it seems like our criteria should be considered with the congestion that was created by not removing the parking. And with that, we should at least be at a higher level than Florence, which doesn't have kids, businesses, or anything else that is in the realm. So that's it's, the thing. It's a point very well taken. Okay. So I would just like you to you know, figure out a way that anything that says poche, that we, <laughs> we need it as high as we can for the funding, because what we're going to do is take your recommendations and put it into the PUC report so that we can say these are the things that make kids and people safe. So when the big train comes through, uh, contrary to some of the local activists that said it's going to kill people every day, we want to be able to say no, the underground tunnel is going to save kids, the left turn lanes are going to save kids, the widening of the street is going to save. We need all of that in the package. And we can't start with a premise of saying, well, we were mistaken that the businesses were going to go away when they're not. So if we go back and look at it and say we've created congestion, I hope the formula gives it the momentum that we need. Because we're not going to let the businesses go away. And we're going to get left turn signals and all that other stuff. Now, did, did you all have conversations with the, the council member's office with this list ahead of time? Because I, 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 again, this is a frequent, uh, frequently yeah. asked question because I, um, where there's only two of us, there were three of us here, um, if those One issues are here, um, we need to make sure that before yeah. it comes to council that if there are any other outstanding issues with council offices that we have it addressed. Yes, we've tried, we've tried to get hold of all the council people, the council offices. On this particular project, I don't believe we were able to make the meeting. To me, okay. Well, will you? Um, but you'll resolve it before council. But he'll resolve. We will. We will take a look at the um, the criteria given the assumption that uh, we're not going to remove parking, and we'll start with that as the base, and then see what kind of improvement results, and then see where it, okay. it falls. Okay. And the, again, we again with that one, we have to save the businesses, and we have to protect the kids. It's also worth pointing out in the application, we will try to make the tie with other pedestrian improvements along with Boucher and try to show the significance of the project. That's why I think it's important so it to get with Rick Thorpe as he's putting together the safety plan so it all meshes. Because if, if a piece is missing and we have to go through another PUC hearing about the approval, it's, it's far worse to go through a two-year EIR process than it is to come up with a good plan. Very good suggestion. If there are council offices that have not responded, you haven't met with and are having difficulty, let me know because I will okay. talk to those council members and say you need to meet before it comes to council. Um, it's important to have those discussions uh, beforehand so that there's anything that we will do. We do have four before we take action. There's one thing I noticed on here on um, item number 34 on page 2. It says that's in District 3. It says Barham. At Coral, I think that should be CD4. Yeah, we, there, we've noticed a couple minor typos, okay. and that was one of them, as well as below the cutoff line, I think there's a 101 freeway eastbound ramp at Burbank, and shows as the Harbor Department. Yeah. So that's sale DOT. It's okay. just little, little typos. Okay. Actually, I believe this one that we're looking at right now is corrected. I don't know what copy you have, though. Okay. And thank you for the bigger type. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're probably looking at the correct <laughs> copy then. Claire. Okay. I couldn't you. read yesterday's Hello. version. Oh, did you, oh, did you there, ask them, Claire? You take credit for that then. There are a couple more changes. No, I just complained. <laughs> okay. Um, Vermont 
median parkway phase one, Gage Avenue to Florence Avenue, was moved from transportation enhancements to bikeways improvements. The project is is 60% of the cost of the project is to include the bike lane on Vermont. They're going to do that by taking out the islands that separate Vermont Avenue from the frontage roads yeah. to get the space, and then they're going to use some of the space to widen the median. And uh, because because most of the cost of the project is attributable to the bike facility, it would fall into the bike. It could fall into the bikeway. So we is that where the sewer is going in? I'm sorry. Is that where the sewer is going in? I don't know about the sewer. Yeah, okay. No, okay, because we asked what the, the people that are putting the sewer in, if it's where I'm thinking, they were going to put the sewer in and build the street exactly the way it is. And we're saying before you do that, okay. you need to I, find out. Actually, I, I do remember Delora bringing this up when we met with the council office. Yeah, and so we, we need to make sure that, that when they build the street back that it's built so that what you're talking about as opposed to building it exactly so then you can tear it up and yeah no we, we think that if they go back they should actually make improvements make sure everything's consistent and not tear it out twice the, the other question I was going to ask you we asked in, in the, although it may not have been a, a written projects but we asked during one of our committee meetings here that uh, the SC area which has the uh, number one uh, bicycle accident rate in the city that we, we probably don't have streets wide enough to put bicycle lanes but there was consideration of whether we could put the uh, image of the bicycle, what do you call that? Cheryl. All right, that's a good word. That they were going to put a graph of something around, say, from Adams to King, from the freeway to Normandy or something, and view how we might do that, particularly in light of SC is now going to bring about 5,000 more houses on campus with the development of the uh, what do we call it, the uh, village north of Jefferson. Mm -hmm. But we, we have so many walking and bicycles around the university that we need to do something, and particularly when we know going in that the number one bicycle traffic accident location is like 32nd or 30th in, yeah. in Norm or, or, or Hoover or something. Yeah. So that we want to see if, if there's something that either through striping or some way that we can put that kind of... Uh, Cheryl's. Kind of a local area bicycle plan That's for right. SC. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a look at that. Thank you. Uh, the, la uh, the last change in the list that I have is Sunset Junction. The budget increased from $2 million to $6 million. It's a project two, where... From what? $2, two million to $6 million? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I heard that incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't real pleased, but... Which number is that? Um, it's in transit capital. It's on page eight. It's number. It's the first one at the top of page eight. Sunset Boulevard in Santa Monica. They're planning to put a, a transit um, hub there. Uh, they they, they so this are one, the document you gave us has six million though. Yes. Okay. This, this document rec represents all the changes that, you're that should be incorporated. So this okay. this is a standalone document that could be added to the report that has all the corrections in it. That resets the intent. But I guess what happened there was uh, they were doing improvements to the property that they were planning to acquire, but they didn't include improvements to the street that they were planning to vacate. And so when they added the improvements to that street, the, the costs went up. Um, we ran that by the transportation, the transit capital committee to reevaluate that project, and um, because cost wasn't a big issue on, on in, in that uh, criteria in that category, it didn't move the project up or down. But it didn't move the project down, so it's where it is. Are there any projects on this that are will be eligible for economic stimulus? In addition to the funding, um, probably not because of the time frames. You know, that's that's kind of the problem. We're, with the economic stimulus package, they're looking at projects that can get started, right. that can really get started by submitting their paperwork to Caltrans for construction okay. by the middle of this month when these right. applications are due. Okay. And most that's of these fine. projects. I just wanted to make sure. I, make sure. Sorry. I apologize, and we're being so Mr. Parks and I have a meeting at 3:15. Yes. Um, sorry. So that's okay. Um, um, one last thing. Sorry. Um, 
there's been a request. One of the projects on here is the downtown streetcar, Los Angeles downtown streetcar. MTA said that they would consider it, but in order for them to consider it, they wanted it to be added to the list of projects that the city had submitted for inclusion into the strategic section of the long range plan. And so I've written language to, to add to our report that would um, authorize the department to add the downtown Los Angeles streetcar project to the list of projects previously submitted. And uh, uh, if, if that's you okay that with the committee, then. You something on that. OK. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I think I, I saw it here. It was here. It was thank there. you. It was there. OK, thank you. All right, if you wouldn't mind uh, vacating for a moment, I'm going to call up four of our speakers. Uh, Jess, Jessica McLean, uh, Damian uh, Newton, Dr. Clyde Williams, and Arnold Sachs. Good afternoon, Jessica Wethington McLean for Council Member Wiesar. Just wanted to say thanks to the departments for working so hard on this, and I'm available if there are any questions regarding the language. Um, this is the only project that sort of fell into that um, that position. All the other projects that would need to be in the LRTP are already in, or they don't need to be in there. But this project sort of fell through the cracks because when the list was submitted by Council, the streetcar wasn't really on the radar at that time, so we need to add it now. So I'm here for any questions. Thank you very much for your You're consideration. Damien. Hi, I'm Damien Newton. Um, th there, there's sort of two separate comments I wanted to make on this. The first was, uh, it, I caught my ear when you mentioned that they were expecting uh, more money for Metro because of Measure R funds, because last year, uh, myself and a group of other people organized for Measure R a signature campaign. We had 200 signatures saying to set aside some Measure R funds for bicycle pedestrian projects and local return. And while they didn't do that, the Metro board chair, who happens to be mayor of Los Angeles, promised us that there was going to be a significant, in Los Angeles's request for local return, there was going to be a significant amount of bicycle and pedestrian projects. And I didn't have a chance to go through the whole thing. My printer spit out the large document to me in weird chunks and made it impossible. <laughs> but um, looking at it, I noticed there was $203 million for projects that would be roadway widenings, maybe $63 million for pedestrian. I didn't get to bikeways before it was time to share the, the public version of it. And I'm, not bikeways, excuse me, $63 million for pedestrian. So. As they're going through projects, if there's ways to, to say, as a city, we consider these pedestrian safety projects important when it comes to local return. It's something that we said last year during the debate on Measure R, and it's something that we continue to think is important. I think that would be helpful in fulfilling the mayor's promise to us that bicycle pedestrian was going to be part of their local return. The second thing is, uh, according to some letters I actually got before I moved here when I was just thinking about it, it was two years ago during the LRTP discussion that the idea of really coming together and putting together a citywide transportation plan, uh, the one that was uh, just started, I believe, in November of 2007, and we've been working on, uh, really came to light. And I think the discussion today uh, that we're still sort of getting together projects and putting them together, not having the connections thought of between projects in the same area really highlights that we need to have that sort of plan, that instead of doing these call for projects amongst ourselves and pulling them out, that we'll have a big list of projects, we'll have a big plan and say, you know, we need to focus on Fauché, we need to focus here, we need to focus there, based on a plan that's been put together that's really multimodal and really thought out. Thank you. And, and you're right, and, and they're, they are working on that overall, but it is, um, it's not coming as quickly, I know, as we'd like. But you're right, it, it should be that, and when you're coming for safe routes to schools and you're coming for this and you're, we'll see Measure A, all of that, that people have a big picture. Thank you, David. Dr. Williams, thank you. D Dr. Clyde Williams, 4115 Barrett Road, El Sereno. There are three s subject items on page eight. Uh, item number five, number eight, and number 14, which are parking structures in downtown. I would like to remind you that in Chinatown right now, you can get all day parking for three to four dollars a day. So it seems like a glut on the market. However, we in El Sereno experience the problem of the parking because all of the commuters from Monrovia, Arcadia, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, come through Huntington Drive. Then we call it the Huntington Freeway. Broadway Freeway downtown, and then they park and take the dash. That's great. 
except for one thing. We have to suffer their traffic. And in fact, last year, DOT tried to get rid of two pedestrian crossings because they were calming the traffic on Broadway. But that's, it's a three lane each way freeway couplet. So what we would propose is take these same projects and put them, say, at Huntington Drive and Maycrest in the Garbanza and along Valley Boulevard east of Alhambra Road. And thereby, everybody could get off the, the freeways there or the expressways there, take the BART or take the transit into town rather than having us suffer increasing commuter traffic every morning, every evening for two hours. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sachs. Uh, I'd like to uh, feedback on what the first speaker said. Uh, just curious to know what's called a project carryover from 2008. I think the call the project from 2008 is being included in 2009, called the project. And then it was mentioned that the MTA, one of the projects, is to be included in the MTA strategic section long range plan. And the problem I have with the MTA strategic section long range plan is they have. They have been um, voted on the 2008 long range plan that they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars putting together a booklet. That the only thing they did, um, this was back in October, was um, they had an amendment to the 2001 long range plan so they can include the congested pricing. Um, project into the 2001 long range plan instead of leaving in the 2008 long range plan. They were waiting for measure R, the results of measure R. Measure R is passed, they still have voted on the 2008 long range plan. So their long range plans in reality are two different things. And just one final comment on your reaction to the, the item that was mentioned about a budget increase from 2 million to 6 million. Thank you, lucky stars are not with the airport. With their budget for top grab in terms of over 900,000, but over 2 billion. What would have done next? Thank you, Mr. Sachs. And uh, Mr. Williams, we'll make sure too in talking to CD14 about those particular ones in the El Serena area. I've been on uh, Huntington Drive recently and I know exactly what you're talking about as far as the freeways in that area. Any other comments, Mr. Parks? No. So we don't, um, we would be amending it with the new version that's been submitted and the language that was proposed for right. Appro approve the revised list and then adding the streetcar. And with the instruction for the department um, to go back and make sure between now and the time it goes to council and then to let us know or Claire know if there's anyone who is in any office that you have not had a chance to brief and have, have requested and not gotten scheduled. And, and if you can get with us before council to tell us what the reevaluation reflects. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It'll be a communication. I know we don't have a quorum on that. Next item. Item number four is a DOT report. Five, I'm sorry. Five DOT report relative to the updated Prop A forecast. Good afternoon, Jim Lefton with the Department of Transportation. Uh, we wanted to report to you today on the status of the Prop A fund. Uh, we've come to this committee since roughly 2004 with updates on the status of the Proposition A 10-year forecast. As you know, Proposition A is the primary source of funding to, for our city transit programs. You should have before you a DOT report dated January 2, 2009, and attached to that is another DOT report dated April 22, 2008. These, these reports provide detailed updates on the Prop A forecast and also discuss potential service reduction strategies. However, for, for the purposes of this meeting, I wanted to focus you on the handout that DOT Ms. prepared. Ms. If anyone has conversation, we take them outside because it's hard to hear. For the purposes of this meeting, I wanted to focus you on the handout that DOT prepared. Um, you should have that before you. Um, Given the fluidity and the changes that are occurring in the current financial climate, um, the numbers are changing at a, 
rapid clip. And since the January report that we prepared, the forecast has gotten significantly worse. And so we wanted to be prepared for this handout to explain to you the current information about the property forecast, to discuss what strategies the Department is looking at to address the shortfall, and also raise the issue of Measure R, which is a potential source of funding to help mitigate some of the impacts. If you could turn to page two of the handout, there are two major events that have occurred recently that have negatively impacted the property forecast. One, MTA put out an updated version of the forecast for Prop A local return funds from UCLA. And also the state recently, as part of their budget, discontinued state transit operating assistance for all operators in the state of California. Plugging those numbers into the 10-year forecast, we're now looking at a shortfall over the next 10 years of approximately $260 million. That's an average of $26 million per year, every year for the next 10 years. And just to give you an idea of how that's changed, in the January 2009 report, the forecast shortfall was $145 million. So you can see that just over the last few months, the forecast has taken a significant turn downward. Also, the year that we go into the red is also a year earlier. We're now looking at a shortfall in 2010-11 of approximately $23 million, whereas in the January report we were looking at a year later at 2011-12. And even in 2009-10, the next fiscal year, we have a fairly thin surplus that if the economy continues to go downward, we could potentially run short of funds in fiscal year 2009-10. If you turn to page three, I think the key point that we're trying to make now is that we've gone past the point where getting rid of some of the poor performing services can help alleviate the shortfall. We're looking at $26 million a year. We're looking at having to face major policy decisions about maybe eliminating entire programs, whether it's DASH or Commuter Express or City Ride or Charter Bus. We're looking at a fairly sizable shortfall, as I mentioned earlier. Even if we were to eliminate all of the poor and marginal services that we operate today, I think there's about 12 routes that fall into that category, that would save about $80 million over 10 years. We'd still be looking at a shortfall of about $180 million, which is still very sizable. And just to give you an oversight, we carry about 30 million passengers a year on our fixed route transit services. We're one of the largest transit operators in L.A. County, so the impacts of eliminating that amount of service would be substantial. If you turn to page four, we've highlighted those routes based on our most up-to-date 2008 line rankings that fall into the poor and marginal category. There are 12 routes here, and you can get an idea of where they operate and what the average daily ridership is. But as I mentioned before, even if we cancel all these routes, we're still facing an approximate $180 million shortfall. So we have some huge decisions to make moving forward. If you turn to page five, what the Department is proposing to do to address the shortfall is to conduct, with the assistance of a consultant, a comprehensive line-by-line analysis, which will look at every fixed route in our operating system and come up with recommendations on what service reductions we should make, whether it's entire routes or portions of existing routes. We expect that study to take about six months to complete. Once we finish that study, our intention is to come back to the committee with recommendations from that analysis. We would then look to go out to do public hearings throughout the city and get the input from the public, and then come back to the council with recommendations for implementation. And that process could take over a year. So we feel it's important that we get started on that line-by-line analysis as soon as possible. And we are required, as part of the FTA requirements, to conduct the line-by-line, to conduct the public hearing process. If you look on page six of the report, as you know, Measure R was recently approved by the voters of Los Angeles County. And as part of that, the city is expected to receive a local return element of approximately $40 million a year. The Measure R goes into effect in July 2009. We're told by MTA that the funding for the first year probably wouldn't come in until around December of 2009, and we may only get about 50 percent of that funding in the first year. But overall, ongoing, we expect about $40 million a year in Measure R local return funds. And what the department is recommending that the mayor and council consider 
using a portion of those Measure R funds to uh, help uh, with the city's transit program to minimize the impacts on the transit riding public. We recognize that there's a lot of uh, potential uses for that fund and there's going to be some difficult policy decisions that need to be made. But given the magnitude of the shortfall in Proposition A and the potential impacts that we're looking at on our transit program, we feel that Measure R should be considered uh, as a potential use for supporting the city's transit program. Um, the last page, page seven, is uh, just a summary table of the forecast which shows you uh, the shortfall by year. And you can see in 2009-10, there's a very thin surplus, which we, we think will be okay in 2009-10 if things don't get any worse. But starting in 10-11 and beyond, the shortfall grows at a pretty rapid clip, um, leading to about $260 million by 2017-18. Um, and could you, and again, in our absence of time, that, um, uh, I mean, what this doesn't say is why we're in this position. Um, we're in this position because of cost increases or? Combination of factors. Again, we've been reporting on the property forecast since 2004, and a lot of it early on had to do with uh, increases in the cost of operations, whether it's fuel, labor, insurance, et cetera. And all transit operators were facing those rising costs. So our contracted costs were going up at a significant rate. Um, we did continue to aggressively pursue expansion of service uh, as late as the early 2000s up to maybe mid-2005. So we were aggressive in going after call funding and adding service. Um, with the increase in costs that occurred, we, that, that surplus that we were seeing every year was shrinking and shrinking. More recently, with the economy being what it is, the Prop A revenues have taken a nosedive. Protected Prop A revenues have taken a nosedive. State funding assistance has gone away. So that's really significantly added to a shortfall that we were looking at just a few months ago. So it's a combination of factors, costs going up and revenues decreasing. And I know that um, there's been a, a request, and I'd like us actually to act on this, um, on a line-by-line -line yep. review. Of the, of, of the public transportation service. Yes, we do have a report in with the mayor's office um, to approve a line-by-line -line analysis. However, um, after uh, talking further with the consultant and looking at the proposal, there are a number of other tasks that we want to look at considering implementing, including a fair increase analysis. We need to look at raising our fares as well as reducing our costs, um, as well as a route profile and a community profile. Um, so what We'd like to recommend uh, that move forward to the City Council would be a recommendation, and I'll just read it to you, that the Council authorize the General Manager of Department of Transportation to execute a contract with Transportation Management and Design to conduct a comprehensive line-by-line -line analysis of LADOT's fixed route, dash, and commuter express public transit services at a total cost not to exceed $200,000. And what's the source of that $200,000? WPOP A funds. We have, we have existing funding in a uh, transit consultant account that we can use to pay that consultant. Parks. Yeah. Let me just ask, what, remind me, what did we do with the uh, FAP before? Didn't we get some yeah. benefit? Um, November 2007, I believe, um, we were successful working with the mayor's office and the members, yourself and the other members of the MTA board in um, making a modification to the way LADOT's FAP was calculated. Uh, the, the upshot of that was that we generated about $7 million a year in additional revenue. So that was a, a huge benefit to the city. One issue that's still outstanding for us is that while our Commuter Express and Downtown Dash services get FAP funding, our Community Dash services for the most part do not. And that's something that we would like to see happen as well. And we've had discussions with members of MTA and some other cities, and those discussions are ongoing. But at this point, um, the city is funding most all of the cost of operating as community dash services. And that's why, that's part of the reason why we're seeing a shortfall that we are, is we don't get any regional funding for those services. Community dash and commuter express? Community Dash is the service that we, we want funding FAP for that we don't get today. What, what are the services? The services that we, that we do get FAP for are our Commuter Express okay. and Downtown okay. Dash. Okay. Did we get a, uh, some correspondence recently that uh, we, that the MTA is not going to fund some of our Commuter Express? I don't recall us seeing anything from MTA about they, Commuter they, Express. They thought they viewed it as being duplicative. Um, that's news to me. I haven't seen that. Let me, you know, one of the things I think 
and moving forward let me like to throw a couple of things into your study i do think we have to look at a fair increase and and hopefully not one that we wait every twenty years and then go up three hundred percent but something that could be done on a scale and again we've had trouble doing this but we do need to look at cutting those poor or marginal services and also some coordination with metro to make sure we're not doing duplicate services in that area and then i think we have to really find a way to maximize our our non-fair revenue and in in our sense of ads and things of that nature and then the fap we need to go back and you know readdress that the best our ability and then when we get around to prop r i think one of the missions should be that we allocate a annual sum because it is local that we have the ability to expect a certain amount of that new revenue but those are the things i think that have to be involved where we look for each one of them to pick up a percentage of this several million dollar annual loss otherwise it's going to geometrically go under if we don't find a way to fuse some new revenue into it i agree with everything you said i agree thank you um and so we'll amend the report to include that we give you the authority to execute that contract not to exceed no use my exact language okay that i had here sorry i was moving way too fast on this we do have a public speaker card while we're doing that mr sacks what we would include sacks um would be authorized general manager dot to execute a contract with tmd to conduct a comprehensive line by line analysis of la dot's fixed route public transit services and those identified by mr parks not to exceed two hundred thousand and then we'll receive and file the report the department's report yes okay but before we take action on that mr sacks yeah thank you arnold sacks um just out of curiosity is it a different formula used for prop a than it is for prop r i mean in the report it states that uh you're expecting to receive sixty almost sixty five million dollars in prop a funds uh and prop a comes directly to the city that's our yeah i understand but it's still a half cent sales tax it's still a and prop r is still a half cent sales tax but you're only going to get forty million dollars is that it's a different formula that's allocated that's why the the twenty five million difference and then um you know you you had you had uh the late night uh dash and and the red line operate over the christmas season and um expenses came out for the dash buses to be seventy six hundred dollars to operate one dash bus and it wasn't even for a week um that should give you an idea of what the expenses are i i don't understand why it would be so high um your projections your shortfall of your projections for prop a funds is it a shortfall uh, your projections are increasing yearly and you're having a shortfall of your projection is it still an increase from the previous year and how the deficit would incur occur um the ridership has gone up and the expenses have gone up that significant that it would that would take up such a huge percentage of your projected increase of your prop a funds there's something there's something definitely not that doesn't seem right with that if your ridership is going up you should reach i understand the the most expensive increase would have been fuel but even that has gone down and you you've gone away from um to alternative fuel i mean like propane or or cng gases so that that would eliminate some of that cost at some point you would be putting a handle on your costs and your projected your tax and your your tax revenue your projections would still be increasing to be able to cover the cost and it doesn't seem to be working that way there seems to be some problem with the overhead actually often would you like to briefly respond to that just as i said before we're we have a structural deficit we're spending more than we're taking in it's a combination of costs going up and it's not just fuel it's it's insurance it's labor it's everything else and something that all transit operators in the region and across the country are facing and then it's the other side of the equation is 
our revenues are going down. Uh, we're, we're, we lost the state transit assistance. We're losing Prop A revenues are projected to go down, the economy being in the state that it's in. So the combination of those two factors. Thank you. So we'll move that forward. And no new routes. No new routes. No, no new routes. <laughs> Show me the money. No new routes, <laughs> yes. Uh, we're going to go to public comment. Uh, Joan Taylor, Dr. Clyde Williams, Arnold Sachs, and uh, Alex Thompson. Ms. Taylor's not here? Okay. So, Mr. Williams, Arnold Sachs, Alex Thompson, and Damien. Go ahead, Mr. Williams. Oh, okay. Uh, Clyde Williams, 4115 Barrett Road, El Sereno, uh, CD14, and probably the future route of the State Route 710. Uh, we've been told right now that the tunnel alignment will prohibit us from having an interchange at Huntington Drive. Therefore, El Sereno will experience all of the construction impacts and risk of future tunnels within our area, but we receive no benefit from this particular project. <laughs> Uh, South Pasadena and Alhambra is expected to fight it well enough that they will move the alignment into entirely Los Angeles, probably from El Sereno through Herman, Garbanza, and maybe into Pasadena or into Eagle Rock. Uh, we're going to take all of the impact risks and get no benefits from this particular one. So we would like to uh, find out if it's possible for the city of LA to get a interchange with the state route tunnel uh, at Huntington. We will have one at Valley, but that will probably be a very strange intersection. So, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Thompson. Uh, I'm Dr. Alex Thompson. I rode my bicycle here from Mar Vista today to speak with y'all. Um, there's a lot of barriers to cycling in Los Angeles. Uh, just coming here from, from Mar Vista, it was a challenge for me, and I'm, I'm a pretty good cyclist. Uh, so I was really excited uh, earlier this winter when this committee helped make it a lot easier for cyclists in Los Angeles, specifically by helping to put a moratorium on this bicycle license law, which was being used to harass cyclists and it was inconvenient and so forth. Uh, this is one barrier to cycling to cyclists in Los Angeles. This is a photo of a cyclist being cuffed by Officer McNulty and Officer McShew were actually being pulled off his bike of Wilshire Division on Saturday night. And this is a photo a minute later of Officer McNulty cuffing another cyclist. It's uh, actually 14 seconds later, so he's doing an efficient job right now. And this is the other cyclist on the car. Uh, this is a few minutes later when uh, McNulty has cut the backpack off of this young man and searched it without his consent uh, when he apparently grabbed him randomly out of a car, out of, out, of the, out, of a, out of a crowd of cyclists. And you can see these guys are being detained for around 15 minutes. And this is Officer McNulty one more time, um, right before he instructs Officer Winter to cuff me and ticket me for crossing against the crosswalk, which I didn't do. Anyway, the reason I brought this to this committee is because this is a citation issued to Tom. It is a citation for not having a current address on his bike li uh, on his driver's license and not having a bike license. So this officer was enforcing this law, which is moratorium, and uh, he's issuing petty citations to cover for the fact that he's basically randomly grabbing cyclists. So, thank you very much. Thank you. What division is that? It's Wilshire Division. Did you go in and talk to the watch commander? Uh, that's on the list to do tomorrow. Yesterday I was at the police commission talking about this. Okay. That would be Which the best bet. That I can guarantee you the watch commander will take care of that. Uh, when, we, uh, when my colleague Stephen Box called the watch commander, they were pretty unreceptive. I, I filed a complaint yesterday with the inspector general. If you go in there personally and tell them what you need and you need to make a complaint regarding the enforcement of a law that's been placed in moratorium by the police department, I think they'll take some action. Yeah. Okay. I think if you were the particular, I mean, the people who were actually there is a, is the best way to do it. Yeah, I just bring it to your attention yeah, no, no, because an example that. of yeah, petty yeah. citations being issued to cyclists to basically. There's a lot of bigger issues that we're facing. Bias-based policing. Yeah. 
This is the issue. Great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Damien. I'm partially just up here to give moral support to Alex, <laughs> but uh, one thing that I've just noticed a lot with the bicycle community uh, when we come out and we testify at meetings is we're very good at pointing out problems. Uh, and not always as good about giving the possible solution. And so I think a good solution to this would be, you know, the Los Angeles Police Department's a big organization. Uh, and if there's something like this where a memo gets handed out, sent around, there's a chance that not everyone's going to see it, read it, remember it, which is why maybe at this point, if this is a law that comes up over and over again, is something that people are seeing happen to them, even though there's a quote unquote moratorium and then people have to take time off in the day, talk to watch commanders, all these things to get it fixed. Maybe it makes more sense to just take the law off the books. I think was the direction we are going in there. So, yeah. Mr. Sachs. Thank you. Arnold Sachs, thank you. Um, yesterday in the city council, you had the east, um, you had an item on your agenda regarding the east side of the extension and, and the project that was going to be there. And it would have been really nice, in addition to patting yourselves on the back or patting everybody else on the back, to find out how the east side extension managed to be built without the construction authority in a relatively a time frame that didn't include a huge increase in the cost. The expo line went from right after it was signed from 350 million to 600. Now it's over 800. What procedures were used to to construct or to have that east side extension built so that it could be used in other projects through the city? The the foothill extension is sitting gathering dust. Yet the state legislation says that the Foothill Construction Authority shall be in effect until the line reaches Monrovia. So the extent, the authority is in, 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 in existence, but nothing is being done. Why is that so? How can that be? Why, why have something that nobody is going to use for 20 years? On a good point, or in a commuter express is a really nice ride. The problem I have, though, I went to the county board of supervisors and I mentioned with this congestion pricing, they want to make headways of three minutes an hour during rush hour. Commuter express averages a rush hour between five and seven. That would mean anywhere from 40 to 50 buses for commute. That would mean that they would have buses deadheading back to their uh, point of origin because not every bus that's going to go into downtown is going to turn around and carry passengers back to their point of origin. So they're going to be eliminating routes that are poorly served to put buses on routes that are going to be deadheading back to their point of origin carrying nobody. How does that work out and how, what kind of logic is that? Let me just say on both of those issues, the next time you go to MTA, I'm going to if you would bring that up, I they have far greater authority than we do. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Adjourned. Thank you very much.